chapter 3, Gunnar's Oath. Gunnar's mind was a whirl of hope and fear and confusion. Was this all a terrible mistake? Had Scully come to save them? Then he guessed the truth and felt a wave of hatred for Scully sweep through him. Scully and the Wolfmen were linked. And judging by the way of the Wolfmen's chief was hanging back behind him, Scully was the man in charge. I'm impressed, Bjorn, said Scully. He stood with hands on hips, a tall, dark figure outlined against the flames consuming the longhouse. He wore a helmet and chainmail, but carried no shield, and his sword was still in its sheath. I've heard stories about how good you used to be in battle, and now I can see they were true. It's a shame you and I were never shield brothers. I always choose my shield brothers carefully, said father. I would never have fought alongside any man who lied as you have, Scully. I told no lies, said Scully. I just didn't mention that the raiders I warned you about were my own men. You're a coward, said mother. The kind of scum who gets others to do his dirty work. I should never have let you inside my home. That's a bit harsh, Helga, Scully said. I'm happy to do my own dirty work when I have to, but why keep a wolf and howl yourself? It was easy to get Grim and his lads to make sure your husband wouldn't be a problem. This is all his own fault. I offered him a chance to join me and he turned me down. Just then, Gunnar saw the Wolfmen's chief, or Grim, as he now knew he was, give a signal to the archers. They spread out, making it impossible for father to keep mother, Gunnar and himself protected by the shield. Mother pulled the gunner to her and waited for the arrows to rip into his flesh, but that didn't happen, and father lowered his shield. Let's not be hasty here, Scully, he said. Maybe we got off on the wrong foot the other day. I'm a reasonable man. Surely we can talk some more. The time for talking is over, said Grim, scowling. You made sure of that when you killed four of my men. Scully, we need to finish this. I know, said Scully, almost sadly. Sorry, Bjorn, he added. No, screamed Mother, and Father sprang at Scully, Deathbringer raised. Grim nodded at his archers. Two arrows thudded into the shield, but the third struck Father in the chest. He staggered and dropped the shield, and Grim stepped forward to take a swing at him. Father parried the blow with Deathbringer, the sword smashing together with a mighty clang. Mother leaped forward, aiming her spear at Grim, but one of the wolf men grabbed her, making her drop it. She kicked and screamed, but there was nothing she could do. Gunnar stood paralysed, letting the rock fall from his hand, watching his father s as, as his father sank to the ground and onto his back. Scully walked over and looked down at him, Cut his throat, yelled another of the wolfmen, the rest baying their agreement. Scully shook his head. No need, he said. The moment of his doom is near. Mother shook off the wolfman, holding her and ran to father, kneeling next to him and sobbing. Gonna join them. If only he was a man, a warrior like father. If only he had been able to stand with him and take his share of the fighting. He was his father's son and to his shame he had done nothing. Mother moaned and leaned over father. He still held the hilt of Deathbringer in his right hand. Don't you dare die, she said. I won't let you. Helga, Gunnar, whispered father, his breath coming in gasps, his chest heaving, his tunic darkening with the blood pulsing up around the arrow. His face was already deathly white like that of a ghost. He squeezed his wife's hands, moved his head so he could see Gunnar. I'm sorry. Gunnar looked into his eyes, but they changed, locking into stillness. A last sigh escaping from father's mouth. Mother howled and Gunnar buried his face in his father's neck, the skin cool and smelling of smoke. He felt father's amulet beneath his hand and gripped it enormous sobs surging through him. 
Take the wo woman and the boy to the front of the longhouse, Scully said. Bring the body too so the rest can see it. Gunnar felt rough hands grab him. He kicked and fought and tried not to let go of father or the amulet on its leather thong. Two raiders pulled him. The thong snapped and Gunnar clutched the amulet in his fist. Mother was dragged away too, screaming something he couldn't make out. The longhouse burned beyond her, red flames leaping into the sky. Gunnar and Mother were thrown down. Father's body was thrown down as well, just a few feet away from them, and Deathbringer tossed on the ground beside him. The wolfmen danced and whooped and told one another how brilliant they had been, and Gunnar felt fury growing inside him. We'll get out of this, Mother whispered. I'll think of a way to, of getting out of this, she said. She hugged him, but Gunnar barely noticed. He saw the people of the farm cowering in fear. Many were wailing at the sight of father's body, and the wolf men snapped at them like dogs snarling at sheep. Gunnar's fury grew hotter, fiercer, and he pushed father's amulet deep into the pockets of his leggings. You know, Grim, I've got a good mind to make... This my home for a few years, Scully said. It's a better farm than any of my others, and it won't take long to rebuild the longhouse. Mind you, I'll need a wife to take care of it. What about it, Helga? Would you like to be a rich man's wife? Gunnar looked up. Scully was standing over them, staring down at Mother, a cruel smile on his lips. Grim beside him, smirking. Mother stared back at Scully defiantly, her face pale and smudged with ashes. I am the wife of Bjorn Sidgardson, and such will I always be. Scully snorted and nodded at father's body. Well, he can't do much good for you now, can he? He said, marry me and you might be a queen someday. I'd rather be dead, said mother. Her eyes narrowed. She spat on Scully's boots and I'll stick a knife in your ribs rather than let you touch me. Grim moved forward, raising his hand to strike her, and she stared at him, her eyes full of hate, but Scully grabbed Grim's arm. No, leave her, Grim, he said. She's got a right to be angry with me. After all, I've just had her husband slaughtered and seized her home. This steading will never be yours, Scully, yelled Gunnar, unable to control himself. It was my father's, and now it's mine. Ah, the son speaks, said Scully. He grabbed Gunnar and yanked him to his feet. Mother screamed, but Grim held her down. What are you going to do with the boy, Grim, said Scully. Grim shook. Maybe I should adopt him. How would you like to be the son of a king, boy? That would make you a prince. Murderer, yelled Gunnar, lashing out, trying to punch and kick him. I hate you. I am Gunnar. Son of Bjorn Sigurdsson, and I swear on the blood of my ancestors, I will take vengeance on you for the murder of my father. Scully held him at arm's length and laughed, the man's iron grip biting into the flesh of Gunnar's shoulder. You don't know what you're talking about, boy, said Scully. A blood oath isn't a thing to be taken lightly. I know that, hissed Gunnar although he wasn't exactly sure what a blood oath involved, but saying it had certainly felt right. What a family you are, said Scully, shaking his head once more. I offer your father the chance of power and riches, and he says, no thanks, he'd rather just be a farmer. I offer to make your mother a queen, and you a prince, and you both threaten to kill me. Where's the gratitude? Here, Grim, you have him. Scully pushed Gunnar over to the other man. Grim threw a mail-clad arm around his throat and Gunnar almost choked, his nostrils filling with the smell of oiled steel and old sweat. What are you going to do? said Mother. Well, that's an interesting question, Helga, said Scully, smiling down at her again. I was thinking of being nice to the lad, of making friends with him. So you come around to the idea of marrying me. Then he went and spoiled things with his that oath of his. Gunnar tried to speak, but Grin squeezed tighter, silencing him. He can't hurt a man like you, Mother said. He's just a boy. Little boys grow up to be big boys, said Scully, and I can't take the risk that he'll turn out to be as good a warrior as his father. Don't worry, Helga. You'll have plenty more sons. I can promise you that. Kill him, Grim. No, 
Mother screamed again, more horrified, more desperate than before. She flung herself at Grimm, and two of the wolfmen grabbed her and held her down. Even though she fail, flailed and kicked and tried to bite them, Gunnar fought too, but Grimm grabbed his hair and pushed him to his knees. He heard the sound of a dagger being pulled from its scabbard and struggled even harder as Grimm yanked his head backwards. Hold still, you little swine, Grimm snarled. Suddenly the man's grip seemed to relax and Gunnar saw Scully looking up at the sky with a puzzled expression. Something was coming in a blaze of light and a great beating of wings. <laughs>